The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, but not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. This Gospel of John, this section we heard today, is the beginning of what's called the Bread of Life Discourse. It's when Jesus is talking about himself being the Bread of Life. And of course, the comparison to this bread that came down from heaven, the manna, that the Israelites got from God. But it's not the same. Because the Israelites, when they ate that bread and ate that quail, the next day they had to eat again. And they had to eat again every day. It's bread that gave life, but not eternal life. And that's what Jesus is talking about, is this bread that gives eternal life. And for you and I, that's manifested in the Eucharist. Part of my travels for these last couple of weeks was go to go to the 10th, or 10th Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis. And I was there with 60,000 of my closest friends, right? All Catholics, over 1,000 priests, over 100 bishops, over, I think it was 2,700 or 3,700 religious that were there. It was a beautiful event. And it was all declaring to the world that Jesus Christ is the bread of life. The Eucharist is the body and blood of Jesus that he gave to his apostles at the Last Supper and thus gave to us and is the reason we're here today at Mass. Oh, it's nice we have scripture and we have a homily and we have great singing, but the reason we're here is because Jesus said, do this in memory of me. And so we come to the altar and in a few moments, I will pray the words of consecration, and not by my power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. The bread will be turned into his body, the wine will be turned into his blood, and Jesus Christ once again is present to us for that most intimate embrace that we get through receiving communion, where he actually comes into our body and changes us becomes a part of who we are and we become a part of who he is because we're the body of Christ and this is unique to us we are Catholics 1.3 billion Catholics in the world I believe it is 2.2 billion Christians but only 1.3 billion receive the Eucharist I yearn for the day when our Protestant brothers and sisters come home and they have communion at their services, many of them. 
but it's not the same. For them, it's a representation. It's, a, it's, it's something that looks like what Jesus did. But at the Mass, it's an actual representation of the sacrifice. A non-bloody sacrifice that you and I, 2,000 years later, get to participate in. Are blessed to participate in. What a beautiful thing. And at that Eucharistic Congress, we had many masses and, and many miracles. And I was blessed to be able, I actually heard about 15, 16 hours worth of confessions while I was there. Unplanned of me when I went, but God called me to go into the confessional with 50 or 60 other priests at any one time hearing confessions. And the people kept coming. And the people kept coming. Why? Because the grace of the Holy Spirit is available to all of us in the church and in the sacraments and especially in the Eucharist. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a gift. A total gift to us. We're not worthy to receive it. We can't work for it. There's nothing we can do to receive and us worth to receive the body and blood of Christ. It's available to us simply as gift. Wow. And here I am in the stadium. It's a football stadium. 60,000 people. And Jesus comes in in a monstrance, in a procession for adoration. Beautiful music, and we're all singing together. And those that were maybe unfamiliar are new Catholics, and we start singing. 60,000 people. We start singing, O Salutaris. And the stadium is filled without one microphone. And people go, how do you do that? It's because we're Catholics. We've been doing it for 2,000 years. And then they go down on their knees as Jesus is put on the altar in the monstrance. And you've been to a football stadium. You have this much room in front of your knees. And 60,000 people, knees on concrete for an hour adoring the Lord in perfect silence. You could hear a pin drop. The silence was deafening. It was honoring. It was beautiful. And we're all testifying to the reality in thankfulness for this gift of the Eucharist. This gift to us of eternal life. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And in the next few weeks, both in daily Mass, I believe, and on Sunday Masses, we'll hear the rest of this discourse on the bread of life. When he says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. Brothers and sisters, that is what gives us life. That is who we are as a people, Christians, Catholics who've been bestowed the reality of the Eucharist do not take it for granted. And one of the underlying themes of the Congress was this reality that we, you and I, as Christians, are now to go be a Eucharistic people to the world. We receive the gift of life. We're to be the gift of life to the world. We're to love our neighbors. We're to love our enemies. We're to pray for those who persecute you. We're to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked. That's how we become a Eucharistic people. Because we are blessed, don't take it for granted, to have the Eucharist. And we want the whole world to experience that. And how we live our lives is our witness as being a Eucharistic people. One of the speakers was Bishop Barron. And he asked the question, he said, what would it be if all 70, I think it was 70 million Catholics in the United States actually lived their Catholic faith? It would change the face of America. What if all 1.2 billion Catholics in the world actually lived their Eucharistic life? It would change the face of the world. Jesus tells us at the end of one of the Gospels, he says, go and preach the good news. That's what they inquired to us 
at the end of the Congress. Go! You know, at the end of this Mass, Deacon will say something. I never know what he's going to say, and it's okay. Go in peace. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. But the, the real underlying reality of that is, go! Even at the Congress, they say, it's over, go! Go and take this into the world. Go and take this into your families. Go and take this into the places where you work or the places where you play. Go and take it into the world. Why? It's the greatest gift of all time. And here we are in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, on a Sunday morning, able to receive that gift. And, and they're doing this in Tulsa. They're even doing this in Bahaska and Dewey and New York City and Los Angeles. They're doing it all around the world. Why? Because Jesus, as the bread of life, gave us the church and the sacraments and scripture so that we might continue this on and do this in memory of me every Sunday, even daily mass. It is gift. It is truth. The whole world is looking for truth. They don't even know it. They think they're looking for pleasure and they think they're looking for uh, the next car to drive or the next house to buy or the next promotion at work. They're looking for truth. They're seeking truth. Paul tells us in the second reading, this is beautiful. Truth is in Jesus. And then he talks to you and me. He says, be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self, created in God's way and righteousness and holiness of truth. There is holiness in living the truth. And the truth is, Jesus Christ is Lord. And the Eucharist is Jesus Christ brought to us in this day for our benefit and for the benefit of the world. What a gift. I invite each of us, each of us, individually, all of us as community, the whole world full of Catholics as the body of Christ. In fact, all of our Christian brothers and sisters as the body of Christ do not only seek the truth, but live the truth. Live your Eucharistic life. Share your love that God has given you freely to those around you. And they will find the truth through our witness through being the Eucharistic people we are.